Hello, y'all. So, it's still, um, it's still December 10th, and it's 10.41 p.m. Um, so, yeah, I forgot to, I remembered it, but I forgot to mention it in my videos. Today is the cousin Blake that got shot and killed the biological cousin Blake um he would have been 36 years old today and then two days later he got shot and killed and then um tomorrow is my deceased biological grandma Ruby's birthday, my biological drunk lady, my drunk aunt Yvonne's birthday, that's Blake's mom, and it's also the biological gay brother Mark's criminal, illegal, satanic, gay faggy birthday, you know, so, um, Three family members with that same birthday. And I guess they try to make Blake's birthday that day. But he was born a day before. So, um. I talked on my other channel. I think I was at the beach. And I remember talking on my other channel. Me discussing about Blake's death. Um. And stuff like that. And so, you know, with, it's like, I, I don't even know. It's like with the biological family, like foster or biological family, it's like you're not allowed to mourn or cry, but they can mourn and cry all they want, but you're not allowed to mourn and cry. I mean, me trying to mourn and cry about a family loss of a family member, <clears throat> um, you know, I'm not allowed to do that. But um, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to not, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I might, because I, I don't even know, it's like, ever since, like, it was, a couple of months after the biological mom, Francis, passed away. And me crying on the phone. The biological sister, that retard Ramona, yelled at me and forcefully ordered me to shut up. <clears throat> and, like, I used to be extremely sensitive and cry about everything. But, like, now I, I it's like... Ever since she did that, I've been having, like, difficulty crying. Um, but, um, I'm, I don't know. I'm just so, I didn't even think I was going to start to cry. <laughs> because I didn't even think I was going to start to cry, but, um. I mean, like, I mean, I'm trying to stay strong. I'm trying to stay strong. But, um, I don't know. My heart is just feeling so heavy. Y'all probably think I should just, um, just end the video or, or whatever, but,
like, like as if um, we don't have a right to mourn or cry or not allowed to mourn or cry, but they're the only ones who are allowed to get their shine. And then it's all like fake emotion. And you legitimately mourn a close relative. You're forbidden or not, or not allowed to do that. <clears throat> and I mean, I almost got killed. I, I don't, I mean, I thought it was, the, wasn't sure if it was, I think it was December 11th. 2000, like the day before Blake got shot and killed, I almost died. I almost got struck by a car. And then the targeted friend, he's still alive, but he, he got struck by a car last week. I, I, I mean, and like, Almost two weeks ago, they tried to do that to me. I mean, they keep on, they try to run over me with their cars and stuff. You know, um, I'm sorry, but I'm hurting. Like, I don't know, it's like the tears are trying to come out but won't come out. Like, only a little bit of tears coming out for some reason, but it's like my heart is feeling like it wants to pour out. But I don't know, it's like, I don't even know if I'm like, I mean, because no matter what reason, if I cry, a narcissistic abuser always get mad and scream at me and forcefully order me to shut up and make threats to get me locked up in a mental institution just for crying. You, you know, um, so, I mean, that was wild what was going on. Um. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tomorrow morning when the video is done uploading um, on this Wi-Fi, you know. So, um, I, I don't even know, like, I'm, and I'm scared to, like, exp I don't want to cry loud because I don't want to disturb, you know, the the um you know I don't want to disturb the neighbors and stuff but um forgive me excuse me but I'm gonna try to keep going like so I was already feeling like a depression and was seeing signs like having nightmares about Blake. Like I, it was 2007 or 2008. I think it could have been 2008. And I was on all those psych medications and I was living in Denton, Texas. It was three o'clock p.m. In the afternoon, when I woke up from a nap, because the psych medications I used to sleep end up, you know, falling asleep and during during the day and not at night, I couldn't sleep at night and went end up sleeping during the day. My circadian circadian rhythm was backwards. So, excuse me. Um, like. I had a nightmare that Blake died in 2008, and I was, like, shooken up and scared about that. And then, um, out of all things, I don't know how or why, and then... 
I think it was over the summer of 2016, or was it in the summer, in the summer or fall, and I had my place. I wasn't homeless anymore at that time. And I had, a, like, a bad dream that we were supposed to all go to this. It was a black female who was supposedly, you know, a family a, depicted as a family member. And the whole, by, and, and it was an unfamiliar face. We never saw this lady before. Uh, I don't know this lady that was in my dream laying in a casket at that, I mean, in a dream at that funeral. So, you know, the biological family, we all, you know, there was a funeral we all had to go to. Then I had another, I, I usually don't think about guns and don't really have dreams about people getting shot and killed or whatever, but, um, I had a nightmare that I was in that apartment in Greenville, South Carolina, and I had two gu two big guns under my pillow. But I did in real life sh shortly after I moved to um Greenville, South Carolina. Um in real life, not in a, in a dream or anything, I would, I would hear gunshots close to my window and have to go hurry up and run and hide, duck in the tub, in the bathtub or roll under the bed. And then I would go outside the next morning and see no gunshots, like no bullets, even close to the building at all. But I never in my life experienced that before. And so, um, I don't even know, it seemed like they were, if they were trying to kill me <clears throat> and I didn't feel safe and nobody really cared. So fast forward to, um, you know, it was a Friday, December 9th and, oh, wait, wait, wait. Monday was the 12th. Yeah, so it was a Friday, December 9th. Very late at night or between late at night or early in the morning, I got up and used the bathroom. And I felt severe, extreme vertigo. Really bad. And then, you know, I wanted to call Blake for his birthday, but I was too scared because, you know, in 2015, he told me, you know, you're unwanted. will make you think things are going to change. Don't come back down here. When it was 2015 and I was living in Los Angeles and traveled like three or four days on a Greyhound bus just to be rejected and hated and abused and taken advantage of by the mentally slow, crazy biological family. Excuse me. So, um... And Blake told me Ramona is a very evil witch. You know, the biological sister Ramona is a very evil witch. And she is, you know, because when, when Blake got shot and killed, you know, she arrogantly bragged and boasted about how much money he had. Like, it was, I think it was the day of the funeral, and she bragged about how much money he had, still had in his pockets. And she lied and said she never took that money, you know. Well, why the first thing you do is feel for his pockets and, and your cousin just lay, laying down freshly dead. And the first thing you do is, um, you, you know, you feel for his pockets to see how much money he got. And then go brag about it, you know, and <clears throat> excuse me. So, I mean, when Blake's dad died in 2018, Daryl Sr., when he died, Ramona just wanted to take the brownie points to brag about um, being the first to see him dead. And then she said that Yvonne was crazy, that right when she found out 
that Daryl had died, you know, it's like Ramona tried to call Yvonne crazy for, I don't remember what she said Yvonne said, but um, she mentioned something like going to go and do something. I don't know. But um, I don't know. Um, I don't even remember what Ramona has said, but um, you know, like it, I think it was December eleventh. Um, you know how the cars try, they try to run over me with their cars. And I was legally walking in a crosswalk in Greenville, South Carolina. It was a white guy. He did not yield to the he did not yield to pedestrian walking in a crosswalk with the numbers going. And then he nearly succeeded at striking me and there was a person that witnessed that. The guy I and he was speeding so fast that I would have for sure been crushed. So God must have been protecting me or watching over me that I almost, I mean, the guy nearly succeeded at striking me. And he was going really fast. So then the next, the next night, I didn't know until the morning of December 13th. I just got finished, you know, using the bathroom and telling myself, you know, if any family member died, I would not care because of being disgusted by how bad the family treated me and everything. And then, lo and behold, my twin sister texted me and said, you know, about Blake's getting shot and killed. And one of the first things that came to my mind is when he told me, you know, you're unwanted, you know, and that's when I just ball my eyes out and scream through the top of my lungs and just crying and screaming. And then we had some other stuff go on. I, I mean, I didn't want to go into detail because I'm on my phone and I have limited time and space. I didn't want to open my computer. I didn't want to get on my computer and stuff. <clears throat> so then um, after like a couple of months after Blake died, it was February 2017, and I was still suffering that sleep deprivation. And um, <clears throat> my nephew Raymond, I had a nightmare that he was pronounced dead, but at the same time, he was physically alive, and he was shot up, but he was physically alive, and he was sitting on the ground looking all around and stuff. And then we, in, a, in that dream, we had to like revisit Blake's funeral all over again in a dream. And so... Um, the biological family members, when I went down there, they pretended to be fake nice just for the funeral because they were shooken up about Blake. But then they end up, you know, whenever a family member dies, the, the family act worse. Like the family was already bad, when the, but when the biological mom, Francis, and the biological dad, Arthur, died two months apart, then um, next thing you know, um, the family got more cruel and abusive, you know. And then when Blake died, they got even worse than that. So, um, and then even after that time, it could have been sometime later on, I was still living in Greenville, South Carolina, before I went back to New, moved back to New Orleans. And I don't remember what month it was, but it was after February. It could have been April 2017. And... I had a nightmare that I almost got shot and killed through my window, my apartment window. And, but in a dream, a friend, somebody that was portrayed as a friend in a dream had, um, took the bullet for me and she got shot and killed by this guy who was, no, wait, he, he was like waving the, he was waving the gun through he stuck the gun through the window and was waving it through the window, you, you know. So um, that traumatized me too. And then I had to um, hear gunshots a few times when I was living in Jefferson, Louisiana, which part of, um, you know, New Orleans. But, you know, that's just my story, you know. 
about dealing with my cousin Blake's getting shot and killed, you know, two days after his, he just turned 32 at the time. And um, I heard the family still don't know who shot and killed him. Um, I don't even know. It's like ever since my sister Ramona did that to me, now it's like, it's hard to cry, or I have difficulty crying, <clears throat> or, or like I'm being blocked from crying, or like I'm not allowed to cry. But, um, you know, I used to be extra sensitive and cry about everything, you know. But, like, when, I, when Blake died, I, you know, when he got shot and killed, I... Um, you know, felt like, I mean, I couldn't help but to cry, you know, and so, um, the way my family is, how they hold an eternal grudge against me for speaking the truth, but the person who killed Blake, the family would do stuff like forgive him and love him and give him a high five and you know, sit down at dinner and, you know, they will invite him over to their house for a fancy dinner that they claim they can't afford, usually on day-to-day -day basis. But, you know, they'll sit down and have dinner with and be best friends with and forgive the Blake's killer, you know. But when it comes to me, I'm supposed to be, you know, you know <clears throat> no, no one gives a fuck when, you know, when I was, you know, supposed to have died. Well, I mean, I wasn't, I don't think I was supposed to have died, but, you know, I think, you know, I was, like, they, I was sick with lupus, and um, they said that, you know, that your immune system attacks itself. None of the foster family cared, and the biological family didn't care either when I was diagnosed with lupus, and so then... um. You know, I don't even know if I still have lupus, but no, nobody cared when they said that, you know, I was suffering lupus, <clears throat> excuse me, and that, you know, they didn't care at all. So they handpick who to love and care about in the family. And <clears throat> so my message, you know, I felt like, as cruel and cold hearted as the family is, I feel like, you know, they should all hop on one big old bus together and, and go ride off the steepest cliff they can find and then go fry in hell. <clears throat> you know, so, I mean, when I nearly drowned at the beach in Los Angeles, not, the family didn't care. And they blamed me. But then that retard Ramona, she tried to tell me how sad it was that a boy in New, in New Orleans or somewhere, well, she heard the news that a boy drowned and died of a amoeba, and, and she felt pity for him. Immediately after I told her that, I almost got killed. But then she told me, you don't go in that water. So... That's all she was. That's all she could say is, "Don't you don't go in that water." So, um, my storage space is running out, so I gotta go. Bye.